Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video, we'll be covering the meaning and implications of the force velocity relationship. The force velocity relationship has two parts the concentric portion and the eccentric portion. While the relationship is essentially the same for both, it can be somewhat confusing to understand. Therefore, we will cover the concentric portion first, followed by the eccentric portion. The concentric portion of the force velocity relationship is fairly intuitive. Concentric muscle actions are when the muscles shorten and produce force. This is the typical lifting portion of exercise. For example, when we stand up from a squat or lift the weight in a bench press. Essentially, for concentric muscle actions, Force and velocity have an inverse relationship with regards to athletic exercises. This means that when force is high, velocity is low, and when force is low, velocity can be high. To demonstrate this point practically, let's take any fundamental barbell exercise such as a squat or bench press. When the barbell is loaded with a relatively heavy weight, it will move slowly, even if the athlete tries to move it as fast as possible. However, the force produced will be very high since the weight is heavy. Now, if we load a relatively light weight for the same athlete and ask them to lift it as fast as possible, it can be moved much quicker because the load is lighter. If we reduce the weight even more, the athlete can move this weight even faster again. This relationship is easy to understand and makes intuitive sense. Now, moving on to the eccentric portion of the force velocity relationship. An eccentric muscle action is when the muscle lengthens as it produces force. For example, this would occur when we lower the weight down in a squat or lower ourselves down from a pull up. During this phase, force and velocity have the opposite relationship that concentric muscle actions have. This is because we can actually produce more force eccentrically than concentrically. For example, you can lower more weight than your one rep max down under control in a bench press, but you can't press it back up. And the more and more load that is lifted eccentrically, the harder and harder it is to control. Because of this, the weight can't be controlled as slowly eccentrically with very heavy loads. Therefore, the velocity increases. So as force increases, velocity of movement also increases. So what does all this mean for athletic training? Essentially, different athletic qualities exist on different parts of the force-velocity relationship. For example, exercises such as maximal speed running and plyometrics would have very high velocity muscle contractions and the lowest potential force production. While heavy weightlifting exercises would require much higher forces with very low contraction velocities. An exercise such as a power clean or a weighted jump may exist somewhere between these two extremes. So we can target different qualities based on how much we load an exercise and use velocity specific exercises to transfer better to sport performance. For example, if we perform a squat jump for power development, we can load the exercise more or less to alter its force velocity profile. Lighter weights will allow velocity to be faster and for the athlete to jump higher. Heavier loads will mean that more force will be produced, although velocity and jump height will be reduced. However, it is important to ensure that regardless of the load used, the intent should always be to move as fast as possible when training for athletic performance. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.